name is Dr. Rashmi Bargava. I'm an obstetrician gynecologist in Regina, Saskatchewan. In this video, I will be demonstrating repair of a perineum that has sustained a right mediolateral episiotomy. I will be talking my way through the repair, and it is my hope you will glean some helpful tips on how to repair perineums. Assisting me today is Darla Hall. Thank you, Darla, for coming. She is a nurse who works on labor and delivery. I hope you'll enjoy the video. So now we're ready to start the perineal repair. Here we have the pelvic model with the right mediolateral episiotomy. We have on our tray the needle driver, tooth pickups, straight scissors, and suture material of your choice. My press preference is to use 2 or 3 Vicryl, and that's what I will be using today during the repair. So let's get started. I'm going to use 2 Vicryl as my suture preference to do this repair. And I'm getting ready to start the apical portion of the repair, the horizontal portion, with my apical stitch. And as you can see, I'm going high above the actual point of the laceration so that I make sure I get all of the arterioles that may have retracted in a cephalad direction in order to prevent a vaginal hematoma. So we're going to tie the apical stitch and I will cut the short suture. And now I'm ready to start the repair of the posterior vaginal wall with a continuous locked stitch. In order to place a continuous locked stitch, the entry point of the needle should be placed at the insertion point on the maternal left side of the laceration and then it will be passed across sideways to the maternal right side where the exit point is. And then you will lock the stitch and run it all the way to the hymenal ring in this fashion. So now you can see I have ran this continuous lock stitch with 2 Vicryl down to the level of the hymenal ring and I'm about to place the crown stitch just underneath the hymen. However, my recommendation would be and what my practice is in my own um, perineal repairs that I do is that I choose to protect this needle on a hemostat like this and put it to the side and I would take another needle and a separate needle and place deep interrupted sutures into this deep vaginal, vaginal space in the submucosa to prevent per, perineal hematomas. And sometimes, depending on the perineum, um, it might take two or three sutures like this to close that dead space. So I will be holding my needle driver like this and passing the needle uh, in the deep tissue all the way across and coming out at the same level on the other side and then basically pulling it through and placing my deep suture inside this uh, perineal body. Now we're ready to do the crown stitch. So as we do that, we will bring this horizontal portion of the suture down into the vertical area, into the perineal body, just like that. We pass the tissue, pass the needle um, into the posterior vaginal wall, and now we are going to secure this horizontal stitch with the crown stitch. And in order to place a crown stitch, what we do is we go deep superficial on the maternal right side and then my hand will go on this side and we will go superficial deep and in that way you actually bury the crown stitch into the posterior vaginal wall and there's no suture sticking out on the vaginal epithelium at the six o'clock position which is so important for um, healing and for intercourse later on uh, when the woman becomes sexually active. So I'm passing the suture uh, deep and then superficial onto this side of the maternal pelvis and I will not pull the suture through quite yet. So I'm going to ask my assistant to hold it up like that and I'm going to reload my needle and ready to drive this suture now on this side and we will be going superficial and deep. So here we are going superficial to deep in this direction and as I pull this through you will notice 
there is a new loop being made by the suture itself and that is this loop right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull that pull on this suture, this new loop, and as you do that you'll see that other loop disappearing and that's my magic trick <laughs> and how I bury the knot. So now I'm going to take this suture like this and we're going to tie the knot so to speak and as a result now we've buried our crown stitch deep inside her perineum and it will never cause her problems at the six o'clock location in terms of dyspareunia. So careful when you cut this particular suture here that you don't cut it too short as that is your vaginal stitch holding the posterior vaginal wall together and now the horizontal portion of the perineal repair is complete. So now we're ready to come to start the um, vertical portion of the repair. And as you might remember, I'm just going to open up my pelvic model here. Do you see the deep sutures that we had already placed here uh, prior to placing the crown stitch? Those are still present here, and they've closed part of the posterior vaginal wall. But here in the perineal body, this part remains open, and so you must close this area in layers as well and I would put uh, probably a deep simple interrupted uh, suture just like this in this angle um, to help close this dead space and then um, we will proceed to the next layer. Now close the subcutaneous layer uh, followed by a subcuticular layer. So two layers left in the perineal closure and I'm going to be closing this subcutaneous layer with what we call a horizontal mattress stitch. So I will enter here, come out here, enter on this side and then come out up there um, on the contralateral side and in this way we make a boxed kind of a stitch so point A, point B, C and then D. So here we go and the purpose of this is, is to provide more strength to the perineum and also provide yet another layer of suture so that if there was superficial wound infection or dehiscence then we have tissue that's going to hold the perineum together. So here we go. We are completing the horizontal mattress stitch. And now I will tie this stitch. And I just want to show you how things went here. So this was point A entry and then came down here, point C and then D. And when you tie this suture, it's best to lay the knot down in a vertical fashion. It brings the tissue together very nicely and then all you will have remaining is the subcuticular layer at the end. So that is the example of a horizontal mattress stitch and I'm going to continue to place another one from here to here and then from here to here right at the apex and that will provide an excellent reapproximation of the subcutaneous layers. So now we're ready to complete the final layer of suture that will uh, be placed as a subcuticular stitch anchored here at the apex of the episiotomy, working my way back up towards the hymenal ring. So I'm going to place an anchoring stitch with my 2 ovicral, and that way we bury the knot and we can start the subcuticular in a upwards direction towards the hymenal ring. towards the apex of the laceration in the deep tissue and in this way I will have buried the knot. So you will watch the suture disappear into the perineum, into the perineal body and now the knot has been buried and we are ready to, to run our subcuticular stitch in an upward direction towards the hymenal ring. So now we will take small bites at the beginning and you hold your needle driver in this way so that it's easy to pass the needle back and forth, back and forth and in this way the apex of the laceration will be nicely placed together staying in the epidermis dermis layer follow the curve of the needle through working side to side, almost in a zigzag fashion. 
putting the final layer of closure. So as you can see, I have run the subcuticular stitch all the way up the perineal skin and how nicely the skin has come together here. And I'm ready to finish my suture by placing the final stitch just inside the deep tissue to bury this final knot. And, uh, and then the perineal repair is complete. So I'm going to take a deep bite inside the tissue here, going from one side to the other. And as I come through, then I will be using this loop, this very last loop, to tie the knot. And then the subcuticular is complete. And your knot has been buried inside the wound. And there you go. Just in case your perineal skin here didn't come together exactly perfect the way you'd like, then another option to close the skin here, which is quite a which is on tension quite a bit, is to place vertical mattress stitches just on the skin through and through, or even simple interrupted. So I'll show you an example of a of a vertical mattress stitch. We go far, far, and always the same amount of skin on both sides and feed it through and then you would go near near back towards the other side always in the same line always following the curve of your needle through and then leaving the stitches on the skin like this there's nothing wrong with that and it's it's just fine to do this on tissue that is on stretch and on tension as much as the right mediolateral episiotomy is. And there's your example of a vertical mattress stitch. And your other option is to put a simple interrupted through and through the skin, just like this, all the way onto the other side, just to provide a little bit better skin approximation. So as you can see, I have given you a, an example of what simple interrupted sutures will look like on the perineum. And here's, two, here's an example of what whole vertical mattress sutures will look like. And you can do either or. You don't have to do a combination. You can do an e either or of these sutures on the skin. Or you can just choose to run that subcuticular all the way from the apex to the hymenal ring the way I had done before. These are all just variations of the same theme. And the purpose is, is to get the skin as closely approximated as possible. So there you have it, the right medial lateral episiotomy repair done Bergava style. Thank you so much for watching.